In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a form view inside of Airtable and then use the data that you collect in that form to send a customized email to the person who filled it out. Now last week we built this and showed our pricing estimate that helps you estimate the amount that Airtable will cost you on an annual basis and potentially even save you uh, if you're using other softwares that you intend to replace. So I am going to use the very framework that we built last week and kind of show you the insides of it and really help under help explain exactly how it works. All right, as I mentioned, we're going to be taking a look at the framework that we built last week in helping people de uh, determine their pricing estimate within Airtable. So let's just really quickly review exactly what that was uh, designed to do. So we were looking at, let's jump on in, we've got uh, these three different uh, tiers here. Now we're ignoring the enterprise tier for the purpose of this uh, video and framework. So the first three tiers, the free, the plus, and the pro. Our first mission when people are filling out our pricing questionnaire is to determine which of these three plans they're on. And so we're, we are confined by these logical constraints. They need to be within a certain number of records, a certain number of attachment space, uh, and uh, have a certain revision capacity. And then also, if they want any of these advanced features, as you see, it's required that they're on the pro plan. And so these are the uh, first questions that we're asking in our form are set up to determine this. And so when you're planning your own type of form and automated responder, what you need to really start with is what is the process and what is the logic behind the questions you're asking. And those questions are going to determine a specific output. So if we jump into our Airtable pricing schematic, now I should mention that all of the personal data, of course, is going to be hidden. Uh, so no emails, no names are going to be shown here, but those are things that you'll want to collect if you are building this for yourself. But you'll see that we have those, uh, those uh, no longer visible for the purpose of this video. But we're, we are asking questions like, how many records do you need? What's the attachment space required? What's the revision history? Those exact same things we were just talking about. And then we have also what advanced, advanced features, if any, do you require? And so the first thing, as I mentioned, that we need to determine in terms of our output is what is the plan that is required based on the uh, inputs that we received from the person filling out the form. And so here we have a pretty complicated nested if statement. And what it's doing is it's saying if any of the advanced features are marked off, then uh, we are going to be on the pro plan. If they are not marked off, then we're going to be taking a look at all of the other uh, parameters that were filled out, and uh, by all of the other, I mean these first three, record, attachment, and revision history. We're going to take a look at all of those, and depending on where they fall inside of this framework, this uh, structure here, then we are going to determine an automatic output for the tier that we would recommend based on their answer. And so you'll see that all of the outputs here are either pro or plus in some cases, or in one case, and apparently nobody uh, that filled this out yet is looking at potentially on the free version. And then, of course, we have a very simple uh, if statement to the side of that that is just going to say, depending on what the output is for the plan formula, this is the plan formula here, depending on that output, we know what the monthly cost is per user. It's either 0 12 or $24 per user, at least that's what it is in present day. And so then we're going to output the dollar amount. And then after that, we're going to output the monthly cost. And this is an easy one to calculate because we're asking them, how many users do you plan to have on your plan? So this is a simple, you know, monthly cost times the users, right? So that's what we have here, user number multiplied by monthly cost per user. And so this is, this is the first uh, three outputs that we're going to be entering out. And so inside of our response email, we're going to have something that says, if you're on, uh, based on your responses, we would recommend that you go for the blank plan, either free, plus, or pro. And then another part of that will say this plan costs, uh, comes with a cost of X dollars per month. You said that you are going to have this many users on your plan, so your estimated monthly cost would be this, right? 12 times whatever. So that's what we're getting uh, there. Or not 12 times whatever, I'm sorry, the number of users times the uh, monthly cost. 
And then uh, we're asking a discount question. And so we've got a different couple of potential discounts that people might um, be eligible for. I'm going to direct back to the Airtable pricing. Now, specifically, this is their Airtable um, fill out form for nonprofits. And you see that they offer a 50% off uh, the monthly cost for plus or pro licenses for nonprofits. Similarly, they do the same thing for educational institutions. And so in our uh, database, of course, we have a question that is asking, you know, what type of discount might you be eligible for? Are you a nonprofit? Are you an educational institution? And additionally, a, um, other savings might be available for the annual or monthly. So we have a question that says, if you're paying monthly, here's the cost. But Airtable does offer a certain percentage off. I think it's almost 17% off per month if you're paying on an annual basis. And so this is another question that we're asking in that form that is set to drive an output. Either you have um, eligibility for a discount or you don't based on your answers. And so that's really what this discount uh, reason is outputting. And so you'll see here that we're running an, an, again, this is just a logical if statement saying if the discount field here is education, uh, then we have a certain output. And that is as an education organization, you may be eligible for 50% off or 50% discount. Similarly, we have the same thing for a nonprofit. And if neither of those cases are met, then we have an output for annual or monthly uh, where we say, uh, since you opted to pay annually, you're eligible for a discount of nearly 17%. And then of course we have a default, which if none of those conditions are met, we have an output that says your response did not qualify you for a discount. Now this is an important step because we're actually going to take the formula, the output that we create in that formula and put that into our uh, automated email response. And then we have a discount calculation where depending on what we're calculating uh, or, or what their answers were for that discount, then uh, they are uh, going to have a certain calculation, either a 50% off or a 17% you know, off, whatever the case may be. And then we're taking their monthly cost, subtracting the discount amount, and uh, putting and rolling that together on an annual basis. So the uh, difference between the total monthly cost and the discount multiplied by 12 becomes their, uh, their annual expectation. And in the case where this uh, person who filled this out has a current spend on, adver or on, on different apps that they're using, well, it's very possible that Airtable may actually wind up saving them money. So in those cases, we have a special output that says, based on your answers, you have uh, the potential to save a certain amount of money. So in this case, if this, this person's mentioned that they're spending 4,000 in uh, software costs and Airtable would expect, or their expected Airtable budget would be 1,152. And so they would have savings of this much. And so we have an output that says, since your spend is 4,000, you could save 2848 per year. So the, the first thing I'm trying to drive home here is you need to build out the logic inside the table. It will make this, the automation part so much easier if all of your potential outputs are recorded here in the table. And so that's step one. Now, really quickly, we're going to jump into step two, which is the actual zap itself. This is a three-part zap, so nothing terribly fancy here, but what's happening is a new record hits Airtable, and that means somebody fills out the form. And once that, is, once that occurs, then an email is triggered, and so that's going to be sent out to the email that is provided by the customer, of course, or the, the uh, person filling out the form. And then we're taking in a lot of those fields that were otherwise hidden, and we're going to put them into this email body. So. In this case, I write my emails most often in HTML, but you have the option of just having plain text as well. I think HTML gives me a little more control, so I prefer that, but the choice is up to you. If this is complicated, all of the things inside of the brackets here, you can just ignore. So really what we're doing is we're saying hi to the person who filled out the form, and then we're saying, thanks for filling out the form, let's get into it, and then we're starting to put out all of the outputs. So again, the logical structure has to be in place and now we're just grabbing those outputs that are automatically created inside of Airtable and putting them inside of the output email as well. And so you see here that the different steps of things that we wrote are showing up, 
in this case, this person filled out that they were looking for, or they are an education organization. And so we have an output that says you may be eligible for a 50% discount. And then we calculate the cost and all of the different pieces of that puzzle fit into this email. And then of course we have some liability things, you know, this is just an estimate that we're you know, providing for you. Uh, you know, we cannot be held liable, et cetera, et cetera. Definitely something I'd want. I'd want to recommend to you as well if you have some sort of autoresponder set up like this. But the third and perhaps most fun part in terms of helping your business grow is then bringing them into your MailChimp and so, or whatever your email service provider is. Now, now that you've captured that email address through this opt-in, uh, you know, this, the last part of that email should be something like, you know, we're going to also uh, be sending you further information about how you can unlock the potential of whatever the thing is that they're filling out, right? And so in this case, they're filling out stuff about Airtable. And so we want to help provide them more quality content built around unlocking Airtable potential. And so we bring them into the MailChimp uh, that is specifically uh, set up for that. And so that's a simple uh, third step to the zap. And now they're automatically added to that uh, subscriber list or email list. And they are capable of, uh, you know, becoming long-term customers. And more importantly, getting long-term value out of the services you provide. All right. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did, be sure to click subscribe to this channel and swing by our website and check out a couple of the freebies that we are offering uh, on our blog. And if you would like some help customizing your own Airtable setup, also check out our consultation link where you can sign up for some time to chat and we will go over whether Airtable is a good fit for you and how we might be able to help. And in the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.